Welcome to week eight. Um, our topic this week um, is goals and objectives. You will notice that the chapter did goals, content, and sequencing. I think that's a bit much to try to plan out in a single week. So we're going to focus a bit more on goals and then developing objectives from the goals um, this week. And then um, hopefully we'll have a chance to keep looking at content and sequencing um, subs in subsequent weeks. Okay. So the first thing um, to keep in mind is what are goals? Usually goals are general statements of purpose about what the course hopes to accomplish in the future. Now, <clears throat> these are changeable um, based on changing perceptions of student needs. So they wouldn't necessarily have to be um, fixed in time. For example, if all of a sudden you realize that all the students that you were getting um, weren't prepared for the level of work that you were um, trying to accomplish. Maybe you would change the goals to, um, you know, create more reachable ones um, for your new student population. Um, so they can change based on what students need. Now, goals actually allow um, the curriculum designer often to use words like learn, understand, develop skills. And goals are actually um, a little different from objectives in that um, objectives are often much more specific. So we're going to talk about um, a little bit about choosing your goals, but also getting to those very specific objectives. So for example, um, from your needs analysis, you've probably found some things that students need to learn. So goals could be regarding what vocab the students need to learn, grammar, functions of language use, topics. Oh, and topics could be all types of things. So uh, maybe they need English to go take science classes. Maybe they need um, English to be able um, to go to the grocery store. Um, maybe they want to learn about culture or need to learn about culture um, for a position or um, for their interests. They might also need to be able to learn um, about genres or situations. So how is a storybook different from like the textbooks that they have in science classes or math classes? Um, and also maybe strategies that they need to learn to be able to be successful in communication. Okay, now working from those, we want to try to also develop objectives. And now your textbook doesn't go through um, objectives too much, so I am going to be providing some additional resources on framing your objectives. But the basic idea of objectives is that these are supposed to be specific statements that describe the knowledge, behaviors, and or skills that the learner will be expected to know or perform at the end of a course or program. And often they say things, they start off with things like, by the end of the course, students will be able to, and then they try to avoid the word understand as much as possible. <laughs> um, so they try to avoid those vague terms that we saw in the goals. Let me actually go back to that real quick. Okay, so you see in that last bullet point, use the goals use terms like learn, understand, develop skills. Objectives are specifically trying to avoid those terms. Um, and instead, they want to try to use action verbs as much as possible. All right. Objectives have um, a couple of major parts that you have to be able to handle um, or embed somehow into the objective. First, you need to have the performance. What will the learner be able to do? Okay, so that could be something like write a 1,000 word academic essay. It also needs the conditions. So this could be any important conditions under which the performance is expected to occur. So by the end of the semester unit, with or without a dictionary. It could be um, a timing thing too. So within um, an hour long writing session, with um, within a five minute free write. <laughs> okay. So any condition that might be important. And then also, objectives should have criterion. And the criterion has to do with the quality or level of performance that would be considered acceptable. 
So for this essay example, you could say clearly with no distracting grammar or phrasing issues. You could say something like at a level that is easily understandable. Um, but you could have other things, right? You could have, um, they're writing this 1,000 word academic essay at the fifth grade level, depending on um, what assessment tools you have for assessing levels. Um, and by the way, Microsoft Word can provide really basic readability statistics for anything you write. Um, what else could it have as criterion? Oh, you could have things like properly cited um, with um, APA, right? If that if it's for a, an upper level, maybe they need to start to learn citation styles. It could um, it could be something as simple as you know with no misspelled words. So there's lots of different ways that you could have um, criterion, uh, and we will look at another example. Yeah, one thing to to keep in mind as we continue forward is that goals sometimes stretch over a range of skills. So you say that students will learn to read, for example. Well, that's actually a lot of different things. Uh, so it probably has to do with some phonemic awareness um, of the spelling correlations, sound to spelling correlations. Um, it probably has to do with word recognition, vocabulary, um, fluency in reading. So goals um, can, can encompass a lot of different things. Learning objectives are trying to take each item out of that um, so you could specifically look at that particular objective. So let's take this as an example. So let's say the goal is students will read books at a higher level. What we want to do is then turn that into an objective. Now keep in mind, sorry we're going to go back one more time. It needs to have the performance, it needs to have the conditions, and it needs to have the criteria. Performance, conditions, criteria. Okay. We can see some of the performance here, right? Students will read books at a higher level. Um, of course, whatever grade level you're maybe starting at, that will give you the, the a very more specific um, performance that you're looking for. Right? Conditions. Um, you could think about, again, with the dictionary. Um, you could think about it in a, in a certain amount of time. You could think about at home with no help from the teacher. Okay, so some things there. Um, and then, um, oh gosh, performance conditions um, and criterion you're looking for. Then um, what makes it good enough, basically? Read books at a higher level that they just get through it, that they understand some parts of it. Um, what does it mean to, to read here successfully? Okay, so one possible way um, that you could turn this into an objective would be by the end of the semester, children will read books labeled for grade three without a dictionary and be able to answer multiple choice comprehension questions at 80% accuracy. Now that's a very specific learning objective and it hits all of the, um, the things that you're looking for in an objective. Before we um, cut out of the PowerPoint, I did want to think a little bit about um, some of the challenges to trying to turn all of our goals into objectives for language teaching. The first is a concern that learning objectives could be used to curtail a teacher's freedom. So if the curriculum designer lists out all of these very specific objectives, does that take something away from the teacher's own judgment within their classroom? Um, does it take away from their ability to bring engaging activities that might not specifically hit uh, an objective that you as the curriculum designer have made? And, and in some ways there is some potential for this. Um, I think the reason why they're useful uh, is so that teachers can um, get the guidance that they need to allow them to focus on teaching. Right? It allows them um, to not have to do some of this curriculum design work. Um, you're taking some of the burden off of them. It can help teachers clarify and organize their own teaching. So depending on the level of materials that you're providing for teachers as a curriculum designer, um, it can help um, teachers better understand the 
um, things that they need to be doing in the classroom. Uh, for example, I know that as a university instructor, often um, when I assigned a course, <laughs> the first thing that I get is the course name, number, and the short like two sentence description uh, that's on the course uh, website or the UTRGV website. And that's not really uh, enough for me to design a course that would be probably what it's supposed to be, right? So it doesn't really give you a very good sense of what exactly that course is going to be. One of the most helpful things then is to get a past syllabus from another teacher to see what the course really was. Okay, so this is kind of the clarifying teaching side. Now, often I design my own syllabi then, but if I had just used their syllabi, um, it would have also organized uh, my teaching for me. One of the things that's kind of nice about this by, by having a shared syllabus, whether I stick to it exactly or not, is that by coming together kind of in this um, shared sense of what the class is supposed to be and what it's supposed to do, that means that when I teach the course and when this other person teaches the course, we're still preparing students in the same way and within that sequence of courses. Another challenge to objectives um, is one of the goals of objectives is to use action verbs that you can quantify. And we're going to look at a sheet. Um, but some things are very difficult to quantify. And does that devalue um, the things that aren't measurable? And should we only focus on measurable objectives? Learning objectives try to avoid things like learn. Students will learn you know, about World War II could be a history objective. Okay, so when you start to turn those into learning objectives, you have to turn that into, you know, they'll be able to state important dates, they'll be able to draw connections between items. So you see how that went from learn to measurable things. I'm not sure that the only things that are valuable are the measurable objectives, but one of the good things about pushing ourselves to think about it in terms of measurable objectives is that um, it's useful to think about these things that students are doing as being about skills and doing things um, because it can be somewhat vague to only focus in terms of understanding and learning. I mean, we're always understanding and learning things as human beings when we see things. Um, but that doesn't always mean that we'll be able to do something with it within our lives or that we gained something from it. Uh, so making sure that we're gaining skills um, is useful. Okay. So I want to, um, before I let you go, hold on. <laughs> I want to take a look then at some of the resources that I provided online for this week as well. And let's take a bit of a look at the... Um, what this provides for you. So your assignment for this week is to think about goals and turning those into learning objectives. Now what this wheel tries to do, it's actually the second page of the document, but the first page is turned. <laughs> what this tries to do is in this first part, um, you have the domain and you could think about the domain being um, the really basic uh, sense of, of what is happening for the students. And you would not be using the first domain in writing your learning objectives. However, these might come into play in um, your goals. So this could be kind of general goals. And then it's the second circle out and around here that actually provides those useful measurable verbs for your learning objectives. So for example, um, knowledge, it could be something like students will outline um, you know, important dates or important points from the reading. Um, students will let's see, be able to explain um, the connections between um, concepts. We'll be able to explain the definitions of words. All right, that could be one for language. Students will be able to maybe match pictures to words in English. Okay, students will be able to predict the content of a reading from the title. Okay. Um, children will be able to, or students will be able to solve 
logic puzzles written in English. <laughs> Students will be able to, to report what classmates, friends, family said in, a, in an essay. Um, students will be able to categorize words um, when given, you know, sub um, some ca subcategorical terms and a, and a header, a different headers maybe. Students will be able to debate topics in English. Um, let's see, keeping going. Students will be able to design, oh, you could do a play, you could do design a research report, design a research study, you could do design um, an art project. Yeah. Students will um, revise their essays. Right. Students will compose, of course. Okay, um, keeping going, some examples. Students will be able to justify their decisions in a project. Students will be able to provide judgments of other student work. Students will be able to solve problems within their groups or solve problems, you know, that are written in English. Students will be able to appropriately criticize, you know, problems um, in work. Okay, you can see that each one of these provides you some kind of observable, measurable, thing to look for to see if a student has actually been able to handle these. Now, I do want to briefly show you what the first page looks like and you'll probably find it useful um, to turn it and zoom. Um, but it is also trying to give you a lot of those same action words and they're actually in this section kind of here. But this one's also trying to take you through low level thinking skills to high level thinking skills. So you can see things like knowledge is kind of low level, just knowing it um, and being able to comprehend it. But then you're starting to move to more complex skills as they learn to apply information, analyze information, um, synthesize information. And then also in that final last column that's pretty much impossible to see, this right here is evaluate. Yeah, you can't see that at all. Okay, so, um, what you're trying to do then is have a mixture of low level skills with a good helping of the high level skills so that you make sure that students are doing more um, engaging work in the classroom. Okay, so when you're working to work on your own, working to work, <laughs> when you're working on your own learning objectives for your own students then, try to make sure you've got some from each half of this sheet, lower level and upper level. Um, as you work to create your learning objectives. Okay, I think that's enough uh, for you to get started with this. Um, keep in mind that we didn't really talk a ton about content and sequencing at this point. Obviously, your objectives and your goals are helping you pick the content, so it won't be a mystery. And I'm hoping to tie in sequencing um, a bit later as you start to think about things like adopting, adapting textbooks. Um, what your presentation of things is going to be. So it'll come into play somewhere. I'm trying to figure out where to best fit it in so it doesn't overwhelm you in this week. All right, that's it. Thank you.